Hello, everyone. Welcome to attend Alibaba Cloud training. This training is about operate and manage object storage service. In Chapter One, we will introduce the course overview and the course objectives. Ah,、uh, here is the course overview. We will、uh, introduce the four following four part. First is what is、uh, object storage service. We will、uh, do an introduction about what is object、uh, storage service and introduce the three types of storage of storage, and we will、uh, compare with traditional storage server and OSS、uh, to figure out what is the advantage. Uh, by using OSS,、uh, we will also introduce the OSS features in this chapter.、Uh, the next part is about OSS concepts. We will introduce some uh, basic uh, OSS-related concepts, such as the regions, buckets, objects, and the data structure. The third part is the operations. We will do a demo about the following operations. Such as the bucket operation, the object operation, the image processing, and the web web hosting, and also、uh, at the last we will introduce the monitoring feature.、Uh, in the last part of this course, we will introduce the security features uh, for uh, OSS, and we will introduce a security function security service called RAM. Okay.、Uh, here is the course objectives. After this course, you should understand the concept and advantage of OSS.、Uh, you should also learn how to use management console of OSS to perform common operations. Also, you should understand the security features of object storage service. Okay. That's. All for the overview chapter. Thank you for watching.、Uh, see you later. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Alibaba Cloud Operate and Manage OSS training. In chapter two, we will introduce what is OSS. So here is the outline of this chapter. We will first、uh, introduce what is OSS. And then we will move to OSS features. So first, let's see the different types of storage. Currently, there are mainly three types of storage: file storage, block storage, and object storage. File storage is also known as networked storage. It's generally classified in the way they are consumed and interfaced with on the Client side, the most traditional server service type is shared file system, or simple file storage, which, as the name implies, offers to multiple clients the ability to access a single shared folder. Uh, the most, uh, the two most popular shared file system protocols in use today are NFS and SMB. Block storage provides network access. To the equivalent of raw block devices, a client machine connects to a specific、uh, volume on the storage service and formats it as if it were a local block、uh, device. So, if you want to use block storage, you need to first、uh, mount the block storage to your OS and then format this、uh, block storage to the Supported format by your OS. Object storage is a, a relatively new storage type, designed for unstructured data such as meter, documents, logs, backups, and application binaries and VM images. So conceptually, they are like a persistent key-value store. Objects are usually submitted through a REST API call. And an identifier returned. Most object stores allow attaching metadata to objects and、uh, aggregating them into containers or buckets. So you can see the object storage is mainly used by cloud service providers. 
to provide storage service. So fair storage and block storage is uh, a traditional storage is a traditional storage type. An object storage is a uh, many used by uh, cloud providers in a cloud platform. Okay. Next, let's see the pinpoint of a traditional storage server. So, in a traditional uh, storage server case, uh, you need first to buy hardware and then uh, mount the stor storage to your uh, target OS and start to use. But because data is uh, increased day by day, and when the volume of data raised rapidly, ra rapidly and uh, the storage server is the storage is not enough for your business, you need to consider to expand your storage server. So um, this is a very common case for a traditional storage server to expand uh, the storage capacity. So in this case, uh, what you should consider? You should first evaluate the new storage uh, size, and which can uh, can satisfy with your business requirement. You should also consider consider the data backup and data security, and of course you should consider how to uh, control the cost. So expand storage capacity is a pinpoint. Uh, for a traditional storage server. So let's see uh, what is object storage service. So uh, object storage service is definitely an object storage which is provided by uh, Alibaba Cloud and it's an encrypted and secure cloud storage service which stores processes and access massive amount of data from anywhere in the world. Compared to the traditional physical storage server, it provides a massive volume and um, it's easy to scale and also it provides enterprise security features to ensure uh, the security of your data. And also it provides high availability features and it provides pay-as-you-go price model. By using this model, you will be billed according to the exact, exact use, usage of the volume. Yeah, it uh, will lower your cost. Okay, uh, let's move to the OSS features part. Like I mentioned in the last slide, uh, there are a lot of uh, advantage of OSS. For example, OSS provides scalability, uh, simplicity, security, availability, and inclusiveness. Okay, let's see the scalability feature first. OSS provides massive volume up to 50 petabyte for a single bucket, and it provides massive number of objects. Actually, there's uh, no limit on the number of objects. For simplicity, you can easily use OSS. It provides RESTful API, so you can access OSS from anywhere at any time. Also, it provides flexible object size. Uh, it supports uh, the object size from 0 to 48.8 terabyte. It also supports uh, multi ways to upload the object, the file. It provides normal mode, it provides multi part node, and also the append mode. And OSS is uh, fully managed by Alibaba Cloud automatically. You don't need to, uh, you don't need any uh, operational cost for OSS. And also, OSS provides some monitoring feature and access log features. Okay, for security, it OSS provides multi-layer protection and 
RTDDoS. It provides multi-user as uh, isolation. It also provides the comprehensive log to help trace malicious access. For the availability part, all the data you stored on OSS are replicate, replicated in three different places and it provides 99.79 data reliability. It provides 99.9% .9 service availability and the service can automatically uh, ex expand and can automatically fall over if you are enable cross cross region replication, so about cross region application means that you can uh, create two different bucket on different region and configure the cross region replication during the two bucket, and it will automatically fall over if the the primary region is not available. And for inclusiveness. Uh, OSS is rich integration with other Alibaba cloud service. It can be easily integrate, integrated with other uh, Alibaba cloud service, for example, the big data related products and the, um, the ECS feature, the ECS product and the uh, access control uh, service such as REM and STS. And also, it can be integrated with, integrated with cloud monitor. So this is the advantage of object of object storage service. Okay, let's uh, do a detailed comparison uh, between OSS and a traditional storage server. First, for service availability, OSS provides higher service availability. For data reliability. Uh, as I mentioned before, it provides uh, three replications uh, and so it can provide 99.79% data reliability. For traditional storage server, you need to configure backup policy uh, by yourself and you need more backup devices to ensure data reliability so the cost it will be high. For security, uh, OSS support multi-layer protection, anti-DDoS, multi-user installation, and of course there are uh, a lot of other security features in OSS. For traditional storage server, uh, you need to configure your own security policies to buy security hardware manually, and the cost will be high. For network, uh, OSS uh, provide multi-line BGP network connectivities uh, so it can ensure the same service quality across nation. No limit for bandwidth and also it support pay-as-you-go uh, price model. For traditional storage server, most of, of the traditional stor storage server is single-lined or double-lined network and so the access speed is not stable for example, if you access the, the storage server in one region, maybe the, uh, the, the speed is very, very fast. If you access the storage server for another region, maybe uh, it's slow. So another thing is you need extra cost for the bandwidth. For storage capacity, uh, OSS provides unlimited storage capacity and it, su it supports automatically scale up. Uh, traditional storage server uh, is limited by the hard disk size, so it needs manual operation if expand is required. For the file processing uh, performance, uh, OSS supports massive data processing. There's no performance uh, de degradation when processing large number of files. Uh, traditional storage server mainly used operating system uh, to manage the files uh, and operating system has limitation of the file numbers for example windows is about uh, six, 60 uh, thousand 
files. Linux supports、uh, thirty thousand files. So the perf- and the performance、uh, degradation will occur if large number of files exist in a directory. So, for example, if you open a directory which has a lot of a lot of、uh, files. You will feel that the performance is very slow.、Uh, and the last for the op- operation cost, OSS、uh, is a fully managed service, and there is no operational cost for the end user.、Uh, but for traditional storage server, you need to hire operational engineers.、Uh, as you know, h- human cost is high today. Yeah. So from this comparison. Uh, we can see that OSS has、uh, so many advantage、uh, compared with a traditional storage server. Okay,、uh, that's all for this chapter.、Uh, thank you very much for watching.、Uh, see you in next chapter.